reading according to Luke chapter 21. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace. From God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you heard our gospel lesson today. Kind of sets the stage for not only Christ coming at Christmas, but also Christ coming at the end of time. And when we think about Christ coming there at the end of time, it brings up all kinds of issues. You know, if you walk down the streets of Fredericksburg, you're likely to encounter at least two views of the world's future. The first view is a rather pessimistic one. It says, the world is going to hell in a pan basket and there's nothing we can do about it. It's just a matter of time before the pandemic overruns everything, the stock market crashes, the political world implodes, and the ice caps melt. We are all doomed. Now there's another one, a more popular one, that says that, yeah, we face significant challenges, but given enough time, science and technology are going to save us. When our cities were, smoke, were filled with smog, technology helped us clean the air. When we're facing food shortages, science came up with new fertilizers and, and seeds that created a green revolution. When diseases run rampant among us, vaccines are developed. When we see global warming increase the average temperatures annually around our world, we can either make changes to cool down our planet, or maybe we can take a space flight to Mars to a new colony that's being built there. All kinds of choices, huh? Personally, I tend to lean a little further on that science and technology side and the ways in which we work together for that, but it creates a lot of anxiety and uncertainty no matter how we understand the world's future. Is everything lost, or do we have the knowledge and the perseverance to save ourselves? Well, Jesus brings us a different message today in the gospel, one that addresses our anxiety and our uncertainty, one that gives our life a new perspective and a new purpose. Jesus brings us a message of hope. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray this day that you would help us to prepare for the coming of your Son, Jesus. Help us to always be alert to the world around us, hoping that we'd have the strength to meet any adversity with faith and with hope. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the first Sunday in Advent. 
the beginning of a whole new church year for us. And it's during this Advent season, which lasts only four Sundays, to be a time of preparing for when Christ is going to be born at Christmas. And we know that date, depending on how we like to parse it. It's either on the 24th or the 25th. But we know a date, and we can prepare ourselves for that day. And to help us get ready for that time, we prepare with visible signs, with an advent wreath where candles get lit, with decorations that turn our minds to the coming of the Christ child, so that in our preparing, we will be more ready, that we will be able to see the Christ who comes at Christmas. But that annual preparation of preparing for Christ's birth at Christmas has an even deeper significance. You see, we believe the truth that the Christ who is coming at Christmas is also the Christ who is coming in power and glory at the end of time. And Jesus tells us in our gospel lesson today that his return at that point will be accompanied by visible signs. Signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. That there will be distress among nations. That people will be fainting in fear. That the seas will be roaring and the waves will be crashing. Now those words from Jesus could make us cower with fear, which in some ways those kind of signs seem to be around us these days. However, we need to remember that the Christ of Christmas, the child of love and grace and peace, that's the same Christ who will come again in power and in glory. In fact, Jesus tells us in our gospel lesson today, now when all these things begin to take place, stand up, And raise your heads because your redemption is near. You see, Jesus wants to replace our fear with hope and our foreboding with encouragement. Jesus wants us to stand up and raise our heads and watch and prepare for that day of his coming. Because it's not going to bring destruction. It's going to bring redemption. So how can we prepare? That's a big question. Well, I think the first thing that we need to remember is that while there may be signs around us that Christ's return might be imminent, no one is able to precisely predict when that is going to be. Mark, in his gospel, says it this way, But of that day and of that hour no one knows. Not even the angels, nor the Son, only the Father. And so if we try to predict that day when Christ will be returning, we're wasting our time pondering an imponderable question. But that doesn't mean that we don't prepare. For example, how would you like to know that your favorite celebrity is going to come visit your house sometime in 2022. Okay, now think for a minute. Who would that be for you? Give me some answers. Who would that be, your favorite celebrity? Julia Roberts. Who else? I I missed it. Will Will Ferrell. What? Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. Adam Sandler. Okay, so here you got it in your mind. They're coming to see you in your house in 2022, and you don't know what day. How are you going to live like that? What would your life be like? Would you be afraid to leave home thinking that he or she might come when you're not there? 
Would you spend all your time keeping the house and the yard pristine, clean, knowing it could sh- he or she could show up at any time? How would you go to work? How would you sleep? Would you do really good at being prepared in January and February, but by, oh, September and October, well, things are getting a little lax? Think how difficult that would be, because how do you prepare for someone's open-ended arrival? Because Jesus is coming on a day that no one knows. Jesus has some words of preparation for us, and they begin with a warning. Jesus says to us, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, or that day is going to catch you unexpectedly like a trap. You know, when we apply that warning to our everyday lives in this Advent season, it's a warning not to get too caught up in the celebratory holiday dinners, the Christmas shopping, the bright decorations, the abundance of Christmas spirits that we can enjoy. Because when we get caught up in all of those things in our lives, the true meaning of Christmas gets lost. No longer is it about God becoming flesh, willing to take our sins upon himself in a journey that's going to lead to a cross. We get caught in a trap of materialism and selfishness that has no room for anyone, not even the Christ child. But the deeper warning here affects not just the Advent season, but our whole lives. When we get caught up in the busyness of life, we can name a bunch. Leisure time, sports events, work, meals out, arcade games, meetings, social media, The list could go on and on. We also get caught up in the anxieties and the worries of this world. We get caught in a trap of our own making, one that weighs us down, one that gives us a heavy heart. What we need to hear today is that while the tumult of the world is happening around us, Jesus says to us, Even though heaven and earth will pass away, my words will not pass away. So what are some of those words that Jesus has for us that we need to remember right now? Well, the final verse of our gospel lesson today gives us three things. It gives us three words of Jesus that help us on our faith journey, not just into this Advent, but into our whole lives. This is what it says. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. First, be alert. When Jesus told his parables and people were seeking to understand it, Jesus would say to them, you need to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And those words of warning are an appropriate ones for us in a world that is struggling with sin. We don't have to look for a conspiracy theory in everything, but we also don't have to be naive. I'm always thankful that Lutheran theology is very realistic. It recognizes the struggle that we find ourselves in every day of our lives, that we are both bound by sin and we are freed by God's grace. That's what led Martin Luther to say we are both a saint and a sinner. And having those kind of eyes that see and ears that hear will make us aware of the things that are happening around us in our world and truthfully the things that are happening in our own hearts, all of which might trap us and keep us from being prepared. So, one, 
be alert. The second one is pray. If there is a common theme that follows throughout the scriptures concerning how to deal with adversity, it is to pray. We hear many stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Moses and of Miriam, of the multitude of prophets, of Jesus in his ministry, of the Apostle Paul on his long journeys, always taking time to pray, many times going off by themselves to have that conversation with God. Now, I have to admit, sometimes I feel like my life is too busy, that I don't have time to sit down and pray. And that's when I try to remember this little saying from Martin Luther, who said, you know, life is so busy today, I must take time to pray. Because it sets the stage for everything else that will happen. But that is a spiritual discipline that taking time to pray that needs to be nurtured in each of our lives. It doesn't just sort of come naturally. But it's one we can practice well. So be alert and pray. And the third one is to ask for strength. I think we know that Jesus' words are true when he said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. With God walking beside us, we can face life's hardships with confidence, knowing that we're not facing those hardships alone. And Jesus himself is our model for this, because there in the Garden of Gethsemane, before his final walk to the cross, Jesus goes off by himself to pray. Remember what he asked for? Father, if you're willing... Remove this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. And God gave him the strength, the strength to willingly die on a cross for you and me. I want us to notice, though, however, that such a prayer, asking for strength, doesn't ask that all pain go away. It doesn't ask that all hardship be cast aside. It asks for strength. For our battle with sin, it asks for courage to stand up in the face of fear. It asks for a confidence that knows, you know, I don't stand here alone, but Christ stands right here beside me. And I want to recommend that that's going to be our Advent regimen this year. Be alert, pray, ask for strength. We're going to need it too. Because things can get pretty scary. Jesus says we might faint with fear. It'll be tempting for us to worry. And then we have all those warnings about anxiety and drunkenness and self-indulgence. Those are not proper responses for the coming of the Savior. The proper response is to live a heart that is full of peace, knowing that God is in control, and we're in the palm of God's hand. You know, there was a conversation at one point with Martin Luther when they were asking him about Jesus' return and what that was going to be like. And Martin Luther said to those gathered around him, if I knew that Jesus were going to be returning tomorrow, I would plant a tree. Now that seems like a kind of surprising response. A kind of naivete to say, you know, well, I guess it really doesn't matter. I guess I'll just go plant a tree. No, I think it underlines the truth that Christians are to live their lives as if Jesus will come any day. Any day. Today, tomorrow, the next. And our business is to be about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, is to be about serving God by reaching out and caring for people. And that's the best way that we can be prepared for Advent and that we can be prepared for the day when Christ returns. Amen.